right, so uh, this is work that I did with Joel a while earlier, and uh, it's a pure application paper. The gist of it is with some careful engineering and deep models, you can get state-of-the-art results on character recognition, general text recognition, natural images. So uh, I find it hard to convince people that this is a difficult problem. Why? If you take a look at text, I mean, usually it's quite difficult to tell well, it's quite difficult to recognize tasks, and that's for a variety of reasons. A bunch of machine learning problems are here. It's difficult to detect, and once it's difficult to detect, there's a sequencing problem, kind of related to voice recognition, and, after, and to do that, you need some very good object recognizers, which are, I mean, complex are going to appear in this talk at one point. So usually people ask me if this is solved or not, and of course the answer is no. It's kind of considered to be solved in the document stage, where we can make assumptions about the way text is positioned. We can make assumptions about the way it looks. It's black on white backgrounds, it's structured in lines, etc., etc. In natural images, we cannot make assumptions. Well, we do make some implicit assumptions that text is horizontal. Other than that, we cannot make many. So the goal in for this work is to try and bridge the gap between documents and natural scenes. Of course, that's overly ambitious. And for that, we will need to do three, these three main tasks. We will need to detect text, we will need to recognize text, and for that, we will need to recognize characters really well. The technical goal of this is that we would like high accuracy, but not just that. Usually, when people do text recognition, they have lexicons, because, well, it's a very confusing problem. And we would like low inference complexity relative to lexicon size. So our work is, well, at least as, as far as I understand it, bridges the point between these two. You have models of literature that are highly accurate, models that are fast. This is highly accurate and fast. So I'll start from the bottom up. I'll start presenting the character recognizer, the word recognizer, and then the text detector, and how these things work. So character recognition, it's a standard 622 class classification problem. It just tends to be so confusing because, well, uppercase and lowercase characters tend to be full of the same. And without context information, which is are kind of not so permissible when you're testing on benchmark data sets, uh, you cannot really do such a good job. So there's a, a bunch of classifiers that you could select from. You could have SPMs. Uh, recently, there's a paper on the formable parts models. You can have CompNets. We would have liked something that provides natural probabilities. And natural just means that it's not like an SPM where you, where you fit a logistic on top of the SPM to get probabilities. And that because we're going to plug this in into another model later. And for our particular CompNet, we make use of MaxOut for pragmatic reasons. So if you're not familiar with MaxOut, it's an activation function that groups uh, that kind of pulls uh, different nodes with a max function. We said, uh, it's an ICML 2013 paper from uh, Ian and other guys at University uh, of Moria. And it can be thought of as uh, linear layers followed by pooling layers, which is uh, the easiest way I find it to explain it to people. And the very particular variant we use it has convolutions and dropout. So, I mean, uh, how well does that work? Well, it's a bit better than the state of the art. So to get that, we are testing on the standard IPDAR 2003 data set. So it has like 6,000 characters. There's as minimal pre-processing as you can get away with. And this is like the Occam's razor of stuff. We experimented with a ton of pre-processing. Segmentation, whatever you can, grab cuts, everything you can think of. And usually just standard contrast normalization works best. Uh, we did data augmentation, and all the other methods did that. So it's a fair comparison. And if you do the standard trick, you chop off the last layer and you replace it with something like an SVM with an RBF kernel, you could uh, inch accuracy a bit higher. It seems to be neat. If you look at the confusion matrix, you can see that these two lines, essentially, that say most of the confusion is coming from uppercase and lowercase characters being confused with each other. So we're not sure how to get around that without context information. So based on that, you would like to go for word recognition, which is the bulk of this. So we would like to recognize images, and here's a, you know, a scary instance. And there are many methods that people go about doing this. Some people would like to rec uh, segment, some people like segmentation-free methods, in which they segment and recognize simultaneously. Others like segmentation-dependent, you just segment and then recognize. <coughs> and usually, people depend a lot on lexicons, again, because this is highly confusing. 
and people do other kinds of things. People have done, have used complex for this problem. People have used conditional random fields and pictorial structures. So our particular approach is a segmentation dependent, and it's initially lexicon free, but we phrase our methods such that you can plug in lexicons while you're doing inference or as opposed to inference tool. And it turns out it works really, really well. So the stages to get this to work, we would like to first segment the word into characters, and we do that with a hybrid HMM model, which you're gonna see next. We build what we call a cascade, and then we have a beam search variant on top. So the hybrid HMM model, um, quite famous in early word recognition, but in early uh, speech recognition works, except in speech recognition, people try to recognize characters, imme uh, phonemes immediately while they're looking at the speech sequences. Here, it didn't work out for us so well. So what we did, our hybrid model segments the word, uh, segments a word into a character versus no character <coughs> sections, and then when you do that, you will get, well, this is just using standard base rule. This is improper, but it works, and people have done it. So, so one, is, one instance of output from such a hybrid HMM model is this middle line. And you can see that sometimes the hybrid model confuses things, and we see things that we refer to as over-segmentation or under-segmentation. Now, under-segmentation happens when you have two Vs, and the segmenter thinks, oh, it's a W. And over-segmentation happens in the other way around. So how do we get around that? We just use the simplest rule we can get away with. We chop up every, every character from the recognized things into two, and we combine adjacent nodes in the graph if the probability of the joint, the joint image, is higher as a character than the probability of either of its constituents. And that forms a graph, an, adjacent, an adjacency graph, on the word, which we would like to do inference on. So to formalize this, we have a bunch of alphabet characters, we have a bunch of intervals, and an interval is one of these things. This is an interval, for instance. And uh, we would like to compute the probability of an interval character pair, a word in, uh, ending in an interval and a character. And for that, without a language model or with a bigram language model, we could have a very simple dynamic programming approach. Problem is, this doesn't really scale well when you want ingram language models. And our solution for that, which is uh, a variant of beam search. And here's the algorithm, it's just a picture, it's not meant to be read. What, what, what you should take away from this is that this does inference in a time constant to the size of your lexicon because it's bounded by the beam width, by the things you're allowed to expect. And it allows us to use higher order language models, and it's quite tunable, and we have some graphs that I might be able to show later. So how well does this work? Well, we test this on two data sets, on Edgar and SVT, and we have different lexicon sizes, which is standard, except the large, nobody uses that for pragmatic reasons. And uh, we have two testing schemes. The one we allow the language model to be used, we use the foreground in here. And uh, the other standard technique is that we do nearest neighbor search on edit distance after inference without any language model. And in both cases, we beat the previous state of the art. Uh, so here are the results down the bottom, comparing language model and edit distance nearest neighbor, and the edit distance worked best. But the language model still outperforms the state of the previous state of the art. And it's nice that we're consistent. So we outperform on SVT and IPDAR, which the previous one, the Wang et al. 2012, doesn't. So then plugging this into the end-to-end -end system, we would like to localize text, and we have a pure vision approach because we were not sure how to make this fast enough, and I guess you'll hear more about that from the Google presentation tomorrow. We would like to split sentences into words, recognize words, and then prune. All of these are kind of standard step, more or less. This particular pipeline is not. We start by extracting potential characters using maximally stable extremal regions, and you can think of these as kind of sort of things that maybe work, which are local minimus and maximus in the image manifold. We then group these things together with a clustering algorithm, db scan essentially. You get things like this. These are possible sentences. We have to chop off sentences into words, and for that we train another hybrid HMO model, trained on a different data set, trained to sequence words from sentences. We recognize each of these possible words, and then we put on the recognition accuracy and we do not match suppression. And how well does that work? Well, works pretty well so far. And here are some examples. We tested also on the end-to-end -end data dataset at SVT, which is also standard. And uh, it seems to be working neatly. 
this was optimized on the F measure. So sometimes there are some weird things that happen, like this word not being detected. There's a bunch of other examples here, where, for instance, you can see uh, some neat mistakes, like here, not being able to recognize this or that. So if the gist of this talk is very simple. With some careful engineering and deep models, we can get state-of-the-art text recognition. With hybrid HMM models, we could use them for text recognition similar to speech, but not exactly as is. And that means that we could probably use recurrent neural nets and bidirectional recurrent neural nets. Well, we just haven't tried it yet. And our work does very large lexicons pretty easily. So that we thought that was pretty neat. And uh, I'd like to thank Ian, Aaron, and Joshua for pointing out some things that are, were inconsistent and, uh, well, for their helpful comments. So thank you. So there's been lots of hybrid models going back to the early 90s for speech recognition, handwriting recognition, various other things, you know, including CRF and HMMs and what you've seen. So what, is there any sort of uh, difference in terms of the methods, or is it just the application that's different? Uh, so we were trying to dig deep into these hybrid models, and it seems like for this particular natural text recognition thing, nobody really tried them for some reason. And uh, if you look at the literature, they tried it with handwriting stuff. Um, and the particular structure of the hybrid model differs. differs. So some people were trying voice-like approach where you have multiple characters and you sequence immediately, and that didn't work for us. So I'm not sure what you mean by that. So for example, what you describe as the, the graph where you, you, know, you combine the probabilities of pieces and decide which, uh, we call this a, a segmentation graph. So the 1998 paper with Joshua Leon Boutou and Patrick Hefner uses this technique. It's trained globally as well. Uh, with you know two different the GTM paper of course uh, yeah right we were not exactly sure on the GT well we considered the GTM paper the problem was that we haven't seen any other work related to that so we couldn't find anyone else that used GTMs so we were not sure if the results would work as well and they were not tested on these data sets I think GTMs were tested on them this time no no they're they're tested on uh, check images so basically continuous yes. strings of uh, this is not MNIST, it's different set. Uh, yeah. uh, so, uh, they're also I tested on um, <coughs> uh, online that, handwriting checks, recognition if I recall as well. checks and online handwriting recognition so we did not find any works i guess on images and for some reason well this gap apparently was needed to be bridged so uh, we kind of hoped that we did that also well yeah but it's kind of interesting because there's a bunch of earlier works doing crfs and whatnot and if this, this uh, predates CRFs, by the way. Uh, I know, I know, I know. Uh, but that, that makes all of these obsolete, which is kind of interesting. Uh, it's uh, the way things are, I guess. <laughs> so perhaps you could say something about how this relates to the Google paper tomorrow. Yes, uh, I'm not sure exactly. I'd like to see that. I'd like to hear their explanation. So, yeah, but looking forward to that. Any other questions? Okay, well, let's uh, thank uh, Weiss again and. Uh,